homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Ah, sunrise at College Hill Farm. All that dusty looking stuff. That's the Sahara Desert's dust. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, today we're harvesting cabbage. Well, it's early in the morning. It's cold enough that you can see my breath. I don't know if you can see it too well on the camera. But it's going to be 93 today. It's been the craziest weather. We went from freezing to 90 in just two or three days. So it was wild this year. But our cabbages said, I don't care. We can handle any kind of weather you throw at us. So the cabbages have done real good. And it's time to harvest them. Now, I'm not going to harvest all the cabbages today. Uh, I am going to harvest a lot of them. I'll probably harvest a tractor bucket full. Uh, there are somewhere in this line up through here, somewhere in the range of uh, 40 cabbages, 45 cabbages. Okay, up through there. So if each one of them <clears throat> is a two pound head, that's a lot of cabbage. Now, I use a very complicated tool for harvesting cabbage. It's just my pocket knife. I sharpen this baby up. Uh, it's a, I keep a bunch of these little cheapo knives. I buy them for a dollar at the flea market and I keep 20 or 30 or 40 in a drawer. They sharpen up pretty good. They don't hold an edge long, but for cutting cabbage, you don't need an edge much. So let's get out here and uh, grab some cabbages and I'll show you how to harvest them. Okay, like you know, our channel is dedicated to helping people with limited mobility do stuff in their garden. Well, I don't have a method of harvesting cabbage that doesn't involve bending over. I apologize for that. I haven't come up with a method. I'm thinking about making a tractor bucket thing that I can just run through beside the cabbage and just pull them up. But I haven't got there yet. So this is what you have to do. You take this cabbage. You lay it over, I pull a leaf back, and cut it off. Then, I knock off a couple of these big outer leaves and put it in a tractor bucket. That is at least a two pound head of cabbage. Okay, that's how you harvest a cabbage. I've got a lot of bending over to do, but it's only about 40 times. I'll be okay this morning. Uh, my back will hate me tomorrow, but that's the way it's got to be. So let's get at this and harvest these cabbages. Okay, we got our cabbage. Uh, I harvested about half of it. We've got like 40 cabbages up through there, and I harvested about 20. And the cabbage heads range in size from this to, to that. So they're all pretty good sized cabbages. 
Uh, if I was a betting man, I'd say this cabbage weighs about two pounds, and this cabbage weighs about three pounds. So, we've got, uh, oh, there's a cabbage worm. Got there. Uh, we've got somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 or 50 pounds of cabbage here in the bucket. Now, I'm going to take those into crystal. That's about all she can process in a day. Uh, because this is going to have some cabbage worms in it. We don't spray much. Uh, I think I sprayed these once with pyrethrin weeks and weeks ago. So, they've got some cabbage worms in them. We'll have to get those out. Now, what are we going to do with them? We're going to cut them up, put them in freezer bags, and put them in the freezer. You don't have to blanch them. As a matter of fact, they stay a little crunchier when cooked if you don't blanch them. What do we do with them? We make uh, cabbage and meatballs. We make uh, uh, fried cabbage, cabbage and peppers. We put it in stir fries. We put it in soups. We make beef cabbage soup. There's a whole bunch of things that we do with our freezer cabbage. Now, after we put this batch in the freezer, tomorrow we're going to make sauerkraut. Now, Crystal and I have never made sauerkraut before. Mom did, Granny did, my mom and Pa did. They all made sauerkraut, but me and Crystal have never made it before because as a kid, I didn't like sauerkraut. I didn't realize until I was 40 years old that sauerkraut is good stuff. So we're going to go ahead and I'll get these into her and then we'll do what we need to do. Okay, all in. So Crystal could process them for the freezer. Only three would fit in each five gallon bucket. So if you go by that, of course, you can never have enough five gallon buckets. There are six, seven five gallon buckets there. In the kitchen, that's where you start. You cut, take off any of those big old outer leaves. You wash anything, anything that's bug damaged, you take it off too. And then that's ready to start to be cut up. Okay, here's how we start with a cabbage. Once you've got it cleaned, you gotta keep cleaning it till you get down to where there's not all that dirt and sand. You know, you keep cutting that core back on the base, but you just cut it up, and we just chunk it up. Uh, we don't necessarily like this for fried cabbage as much as we do for soups and stews and stir fries, because beef cabbage soup is some awesome stuff. Just keep working at it until it's all chunked up. There's going to be quite a bit of water. Cabbage is full of water. That's its number one thing. Once the cabbage is uh, cut up, we put them in these big old bowls. You got to have plenty of bowls on a homestead. And uh, we put two pounds in a bag and then seal the bag up. We don't blanch it, whatever. This is just going to go straight in the bag and into the freezer. And there are plenty of these to do. We squeeze out as much air as we can and seal that baby up. 
Okay, two five gallon buckets left, but 52 pounds of cabbage ready for the freezer. I hope we've got room. Uh, because of our coal crops, we had 44 pounds of broccoli, about 14 pounds of cauliflower, and now 52 pounds of cabbage. Now, if you like this kind of stuff, this homesteading, do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this homesteading stuff every week, sometimes one, sometimes five videos. Just depends on what's going on in the homestead that week. Now, if you hit the little bell, it'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload every Sunday. And now, it's time for me to get on to the next thing.